Hello and welcome back to Rage Gaming and of course more Power World. Today we're talking mounts though, a realistic look, some of the best options. Some come pretty early and incredible, some are much later but are technically best, so we've got to talk about them and also that middle ground. This list is going to be the best mounts to consider for the main stuff. Ground movement, flying, combat and other great utility picks. With that said then, let's just get started. All right, so let's kick this off with the ground mounts. There is actually a bunch of really good options for this, but the easiest for me to recommend are the two kind of deer types. There's Aethyr deer, which you can get very early, of course, and then the very well-known, very popular Feng Lope, and that's for a reason. These mount types can actually have a double jump while mounted, and that is major for getting around the world when you're, you know, on a ground mount. If you don't have flying yet, that double jump is just gonna allow you to traverse the landscape in an effective way. There's going to be a ton of little jumps like that that are going to happen everywhere and of course having a ground mount that can do this pretty much immediately is important. And that's why Aether Deer is kind of the obvious choice. Interestingly, Aether Deer also comes with a bonus effect that the other one doesn't. It actually has increased efficiency while you're cutting down those trees with the level 2 lumbering as it's passive. The reason why Feng Lope is just kind of considered the better mount is because as you can see it is so much faster. It's much faster and then the actual jumping that you get, the movement that you get, is a lot more floaty and obviously you jump a lot higher. So if you're truly thinking traversal between these two, it's just very clear that Feng Lope is the winner. But if you've got none, Aether Deer is still going to be a great starting point. This actually might be considered the best overall mount that kind of hits all the notes you need it to before you can actually get a proper flying mount that has good movement and mobility. Now technically there's one more that you should definitely be aware of and that is Palladius which comes with a triple jump but this is a level 50 legendary and if you're going to go this hard there's obviously another legendary you should focus first. Palladius isn't really the same kind of mobility as well anyway even though it does have the triple jump and it does go pretty high vertically because of that this isn't really why you're using this mount since Feng Lope is way more attainable and could do pretty much the exact same thing but much sooner much quicker. To get the deer then all you need to do is come to any of these regions in the sort of center area. This should be pretty easy to get. Probably the easiest of the pals on this list today. On the other hand the Feng Lope's going to require certainly some more travel. You're going to have to come all the way to the bottom left the volcano island or all the way to the top right but to be honest you're probably going to the bottom left there's way more spawns, you just follow along the beach and you should find one. Now outside of that, there's fantastic utility in one specific pal here that you definitely want to consider. Mama Rest here is this huge forest themed mammoth that's going to be very useful for farming materials. As you can see, Mama Rest is definitely not the mount that you want to do traversal on. It's very very slow. But what you really care about here is farming materials, whether that's logging or mining like both here. You could use your earth impact and slam down, dealing great AOE damage to everything. You've got the grass tornadoes to deal many ticks of damage, and basically all you're doing is using the mount to deal lots of ticks of damage until you break whatever it is you're actually farming. In just moments, I've been able to pick up a ton of wood and a load of ore to the point that I can't even move. This all comes because Mama Rest actually has this passive of improved efficiency when cutting those trees and mining ores while you're mounted. What's great about that is that it doesn't use stamina, you just use its different abilities to crush whatever you're dealing with. And yeah, as you can see, I'm able to really gather quite quickly because of it. To get yourself your own Mama Rest then, for its habitat, you have quite a few options, especially in wooded areas. So if you're going to be farming things yourself, it's definitely a valid option and a pretty cool mount because you're so high up on this massive creature. So what I just showed there was some gathering, right? And very quickly I gathered so much ore, so much wood that I was over encumbered very quick. So a utility mount to have around would definitely be one that's going to increase your carry load. One pose then are literally the best options for these resource transporting picks. There's two kinds, there's Wumpo and Wumpo Baton here, this different sort of variant. And as you can see, just while they're in the team, Wumpo Baton help carry supplies, increasing the player's max carrying capacity. This can't really be understated, and if you're really moving things around or gathering or whatever, you kind of need one in the team. And either one will work the same. I could imagine if you're base building as well, just, I mean, there's so many examples where you just need extra carry load, and having this is just kind of a non-negotiable. You can see that it's level four on the transporting so it does its job very well. It's a little bit of a bonus one because it's not exactly one that I'm using specifically to mount as you can see much like the mammoth it's not hyper quick but it's just about having one on the squad even though you might not actively be using it. So your regular one pose are found to the north on this icy
icy region. And then the Wumpo buttons are found to the west on the island over here. So either way, one of these is going to be well worth the effort of having in a party when you need it. If that's too late game, too difficult, there is a good alternative in the form of these Mossanders. Mossanders, as you can see, have transporting level three. It's a level below what we just talked about, but that's still helpful. And it comes with a wonderful bit of utility that can't really be understated. It's got universal use in the level two planting, handiwork, lumbering, as well as the transporting. But what we really care about specifically is the fact that it has a literal grenade launcher. By right clicking, it will pull out an actual grenade launcher, which you can fire and aim yourself. This highly explosive AOE effect is a hard stun. So for whatever you're dealing with, whatever you're fighting or trying to capture perhaps, being able to shoot a shot that you control that has such radius and then hard stun potential on top of that, it allows for some ridiculous CC potential that you, yeah, you're completely in control of. So I just find this little bit of utility absolutely phenomenal for a mount like this. And as it said, it can rapidly fire this. So it's not like you have to do bit by bit, you can just go absolutely nuts and just destroy everything. Though you'll need the energy, you know, the resource to do so while mounted. There are two kinds of Mossanders. There's the regular one in grass and then there's Lux version in the electric. And as you can see, you can find the Mossanders all around this region on this island here. So it should be a pretty attainable one. Next up then, it's time to shift gear and talk about the all important flying pals, of which there's quite a few options. It's gonna make the game a lot easier to reverse. Some areas can be annoying, even though you've got a double jump to actually get to. Now there's a lot of options, but I think you're probably gonna be aware of this one. This is the best flying mount in the entire game and therefore probably the best mount to traverse the whole map in general. Jet Dragon or Jet Dragon is the legendary level 50 crazy dragon that flies so fast, so far for so long. It's just undebatable. It's just the best one. Look how ridiculous this movement is. The actual dragon itself is obviously really good at combat too. It has auto lock missiles firing like these ridiculous cannons, which obviously you can do while you're flying, which is incredible combat ability. On top of that, you got the fireball charges and this sort of channeled beam comet for many ticks of damage. It's a ridiculously good mount. I think we all know that. The problem with Jet Dragon then is the fact that it is, you know, obviously a legendary. So while you might not be able to check its habitat in the PAL deck, we can see where it is on the map normally. So by checking the field boss filter on the map, it's at the bottom left on the giant volcano island on the northwestern side. This is where you're going to find it. And again, it's going to be a level 50 fight. So to say the least, it's a tough one, but as it is a dragon type, it does have a weakness in the form of ice. So if you bring some ice pals, that might help you with the fight, but just be aware that it's a super late game fight. It's gonna be the best pick as soon as you can possibly get it. But before then is a long journey. There's a bunch of different options that might be more realistic, that might work better for you, like Beacon, Ragnarok, Frostelian. These are gonna be great flyers that are more accessible, last a little while. But we really like Hell Zephyr here because of the very unique effect here with Wings of Death. Applies dark damage to the player's attacks while mounted. This actually increases your damage a small amount as well. Not to mention it's a very cool looking pal. So we can generate fire tornadoes, do the spirit flame, there's a nightmare ball as well. It's not bad for combat specifically on top of actually being a flying mount itself. But obviously as a flying mount it's going to be a lot slower than the dragon but it's a great way to actually get some verticality and have something that's going to be great in combat. Especially if you're going to need that dark damage type that you can access yourself since we're able to directly control the actual PAL here. Just be aware though, this is one you're only going to be able to get at night. So if you check the actual PAL deck, you're going to need to swap to nighttime to be able to see where it is, but it's in this kind of close to center island, quite a few spawns, it's definitely available. If you wanted another fantastic combat flyer though, Vanna Worm here is super good. This is because while you're actually mounted and using it, it increases the damage you're going to deal to enemy weak points, which is generally ideally what you'd be aiming for anyway. So it's just going to enhance that damage. If you want specifically a combat mount then for Ariel before say the dragon, this actually might be a better pick, though it's obviously not the ideal one for moving around and flying since it's not the fastest pick you could go for. For its habitat though, you can go over to the volcano island along the beaches and up on the center hill, or if you want to avoid that, there's a cluster here towards the middle. If we're going to talk about combat options then, we definitely need to highlight Grisbolt, which is 
phenomenal. This is specifically for mounted combat, and obviously this is a ground one. It's an electric type, and obviously a quite iconic pal from all the trailers and stuff. And that is because while you've got it mounted, and once you've got it, you are able to aim in and pull out this ridiculous minigun and just go to town on targets. Outside of that, it is an electric type, so if that is relevant to you, it's going to be really good. Able to call down these strikes of lightning on specific targets, or AoE around itself if you're surrounded by mobs that you want to just take out in one go. It's a very good combat mount and one that you can directly control like we talked about with the mosses earlier. So Grisbolt is definitely a top tier option for that and it's one that you're going to have to go to this southern island for to actually get. So it's not the most attainable but well worth it. The final mount that I want to mention is Kitson here which is absolutely incredible. Not only is it just this massive blue Firefox thing, which in itself is just a very cool mount to have and quite useful in terms of combat as well, but it's the main passive that is absolutely awesome for dealing with some of the difficult terrain. So as you can see, while you're riding it, you are completely unaffected by the cold or heat. So say in this super cold area, it is absolutely clutch. But the same can apply for a really hot area. It lets you traverse it without the problems and dealing with different equipment swapping that you might need to do. The problem with this pal though is that it's quite a rare pal to find because as you can see, it is not active at daytime. It's only active at night and you find it on this kind of icy plateau to the northeast. Once you get up here, again, you're gonna have to come here at night and it's also going to be super cold here at night on top of just being a cold area. So it can be a bit of a pain to farm, but once you have it, I think it is well worth it since you won't really have to worry about these annoying terrains with the hot or cold weather at extreme levels because you can just ride this around while you look around. So definitely worth considering and one of the better mounts to be aware of. But yeah, that's our list of awesome pals for lots of different uses and purposes. If you guys have any extra suggestions, let us know on why and it might just help someone. But for now, I've been Hollow, you've been you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is. Uh, goodbye.